I guess, I guess we're going to start like this. Um, I don't know how, how, how did you sleep last night? Uh, yo, I had a really, well, I had dreams. I had lots of dreams. I don't know. Do you, do you remember your dreams? I remember them late, lately. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the last one you remembered was, but the one I remembered last night was I was down South, like in, you know, some place that looked like Texas or, you know, Houston or New Orleans or something like that, riding around the city with my father. And then we got out to go down this alleyway, which more felt like an alleyway you, you see in London, you know, like uh -huh. with shops on each side of the alley, you know, uh -huh. little shops. My dad was looking at some antiques, a row of antique stores. Anyway, it went on from there because I woke up like, whoa, which was way out. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, I slept all right. How'd you sleep? Yeah, I, last night I slept well. Kara has this tea <laughs> that she, I said, can I have some of that tea that you like, you know, sparingly, you know, there's like only a little, her friend sent it from California. It's chamomile tea with a little bit of saffron. Nice. And it gives a soft sleep. Yeah. I've been dreaming about the past a lot too. Right. But I like, you know, that picture of your dad that you had on Instagram and yeah. you look like <laughs> your dad. Yeah. A lot of people say that. And then when I see younger images of my father, it's pretty striking how how close, uh, how many features we share, you know, it's kind of, so even if I walk around, if I go around the city in Houston, people would be like, oh, you must be Andy Moran's son, you know, <laughs> so you can't get away from it, which I guess, you know, as children, right? You know, like, you know, your father was a pilot, right? Yes, pilot. You know? yeah, 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 I think that, I mean, you know, um, well, you gotta have the Afro like your dad. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, yeah. but it's interesting because you are from Houston, right? Yeah, from Houston. And, you know, I like grew up in the 70s. It, you know, it kind of had a, a certain feel. But my pivot, my real pivot was really kind of like becoming a teenager in the 80s, you know? And in the 80s, hip hop seemed to be finding its way across the globe, let alone across America. And, you know, by the time the 80s came, mid 80s to late 80s, it was just this moment of kind of like awakening. At one point, I was also finding the music of Thelonious Monk, jazz music, et cetera. And uh -huh. then the other was like, I was really just listening to mostly hip hop. And because it was the music of my generation. And uh, also it was the music of the generation following the black power movement too. So there was something kind of still embedded in that music that was like brand new, hadn't been totally commercialized beyond comparison to the way it is now. Uh, something about like, like seeing that come from New York City or come from out in Los Angeles and the Bay Area come down to Houston, you know, and, uh, and Houston trying to build up its own scene of music too. Um, but then when I got to New York, I, you know, was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be, you know, seeing, you know, we talk about this a lot, but like yeah. seeing even your images that you took of like Brand Nubian, of De La Soul, you know, like yeah. of these bands that for me, it was as much about what they sounded like, but the images that you have, that you made of them also made them feel like totally like, like people rather than, you know, kind of like, um, supreme beings they were just like 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 citizens you know yeah 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 that that basically had you know why that happened that way was because you know like when i tell people i'm shy they always laugh because i have such a big mouth and you know i, <laughs> I can make my way into things but it, that's really like how i make up for being shy and mm -hmm. when i was doing those pictures yeah the other day i was just listening to poor righteous teachers oh yeah yeah, yeah. and i photographed them and you know, I photographed those guys for the Amsterdam news. Wow. Uh huh. Amazing. Yeah. And it was a story about 5% nation band, like, like, mm -hmm. like kind of like brand Nubian, but poor righteous teachers. Right. And, and then I just remember that I didn't know what to tell those guys. Like mm. I met them somewhere, you know, somewhere wherever they lived and right. I wasn't going to tell them how to pose or anything. So they would always just end up just being there. And right. me taking the picture, so that gave you that sort of. Yeah, but do you do you do you do you? I mean, like every every one of the images also feels like extremely natural, you know. 
And I've done enough photo shoots with photographers to know like, oh God, like I, it's very difficult for me to do that. But you know, how do you get people to relax like around the lens, you know? Wow. Well, I just photographed you last week for your album. Right. <laughs> I think I get people to relax because I don't have assistance. I just have the camera. I mm. sort of, maybe it looks like I'm fumbling or something, you know? Mm. But then, you know, I'm very, I don't look that focused, but I'm, I'm hyper-focused, you know? <laughs> I'm hyper-focused on what needs to be done. Right. And also I try to make room for uh, some sort of freedom where the person, you know, I, don't, I mean, I might say, let's walk over there, or let's walk over here, but I don't, there's not too much directions. Or I might say like, look off or, you know. Right. Um, I mean, um, I think really, you know, because, because at the museum now they have the movie, The Park, I think the way I made that movie is really, the way my approach is like, I, I would always go by that park and I was that basketball court in the park in Fort Green Park. And what fascinated me about it was that it had no fence around it mm -hmm. because most basketball courts are fenced in. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that always fascinated me is that there was always people playing of different ages and even young kids. If you saw like a 10 year old or a 12 year old with an eight year old, the 12 year old would, would give the eight year old a chance, even right. though he could block every shot until he could destroy <laughs> him, that would not happen. It was mm. like, a, like a, an understanding, like, an, and, uh, and then the way I filmed it is I just, you know, I had a DP, a director of photography, but basically because he had the camera and we set up the tripod, we put the camera on it, rolled out a blanket, opened a bottle of wine, had some snacks, and just let and let the camera run right for 42 minutes yeah and then eight and then 18 minutes from the other end from the reverse angle and right. and that's all and i decided on it done on one day i told my friend we we'll just do it on wednesday at whatever it was three mm -hmm. and i'll accept what happens mm -hmm. and i think that's what that's what often my work is about that i accept what happens yeah, that texture reads. I mean, it reads in the still images, it reads in the moving images, it reads in the shadow, it re reads in somebody's like slight smile, you know, like all the portraits you've taken. Um, that stuff reads, you know, and as musicians, you know, musicians, we make in real time. So there is no back, you know, it just is only forward. And it, and it takes a while to get used to it, you know, uh, to get used to, I wouldn't even say the mistake, you know, what are you talking about? What just, what is? And um, to get used to it, you know, there's this, I, I can't, I can't recall the quote exactly, but there was something about, something about what the drummer Art Blakey said to one of his musicians in his band, The Jazz Messengers, mm -hmm. is he said, well, when you make a mistake, you know, play it twice, <laughs> you know, like, nah, come back over it. You know what I mean? Like, cause he's saying to, a, to for me, to what, he, what it seems like he's saying is like, nah, that's actually right. And if you say it again to yourself, you'll find that it's right. And it's not even like about right, it's just what it is. And um, most of what makes like effective art is that is part, you know, like what people decide, what the artist decides to make the is, you know? whether it's the sound or the way Thelonious Smoke or Cecil Taylor moves a chord, you know, uh, the way Art Blakey press rolls on the snare, you know, uh, that you then say, oh no, that's like, I mean, we'll, we'll, like what we say in, in, in Houston is about the slang, you know, like it's the slang, like I always know who they are because of, because of, of what they say is, you know? Well, you know, the mistake I embrace, you know, fully, I mean, as, as an artist, um, because, um, because a lot of people ask me because I put out a lot of books, and, <laughs> you know, and there's like a lot of photos and then they ask about ed editing and I'm like, well, you know, I didn't do a lot of editing. Yeah. Um, I actually have a, I have a, a website up now called rmarkopolis.tv that shows some of my movies. And one of the movies is, like an hour long of uh, illegal drag raising. 
race, wow. illegal drag car racing in the Bronx in Brooklyn. Yeah. And I, I shot like six hours up there. But basically what I decided in the end to make the film is like the first hour of footage that I shot. I just mm. unedited. It's mm -hmm. just all straight from the camera. Mm -hmm. So it is full of mistakes, mm -hmm. but it's also full of um, soul and it's full of life and it's full yeah. of life because yeah. like because you can see when I get distracted or when I, you know, or when the cars are coming, they're going fast, you can see me move, you know. <laughs> yes, um, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 that the way I guess you would start or stop any of the film on that is is also decision making, you know, like, okay, now let me stop to move over here. Or, or, you know, like the flinch, you know, like when you flinch, when you hear a sound too, that's how it is. Um, like, um, I think when I saw the park for the first time mm -hmm. in Paris, I remember seeing the show, right? So there's a lot of video in the show with all the, all the, 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 the monitors, you know, like in an in a installation and then going to that back room Right, it was on the wall in the back room. I just sat yeah. there for a while, like looking at the game. And the game ain't like on the court. The game is like, you know, Brooklyn <laughs> for green life. <laughs> it's a constant game, you know, for all of us, especially now, like how do you lose COVID? But uh and um and I and I and it made me think, and I think I wrote you, it was like, and I was thinking like I this musician named his name was um uh, Brother Ah, like mm -hmm. A.H., you know, and he played French horn for uh, Sun Ra's band, you know, so he was in the orchestra, but he also played French horn with Thelonious Monk uh, in this great concert called Monk at Town Hall from 1959, Town Hall here in New York City. Uh -huh. and so br I met Brother Ah, we were doing a talk together at, at the Kennedy Center, and, uh -huh. he was, and he was talking about Thelonious Monk and movement, you know, like how the body moves, right? And he said, oh, you know, Thelonious, he, you know, like he, he would sit and watch basketball games for a long time. And then he, he would go into the, into the recreation center at the bottom of the projects and, and get the piano and pull the piano out next to the basketball court and play to the game of basketball. And then he demonstrated, Brother Ah demonstrated kind of like the way Monk would play this song. The song is called Evidence, how he would play the song, which is a very kind of like, it's like the notes kind of like jump out of the air. You don't even think that they're in time with each other. They just seem like some kind of odd constellation that nobody's really been able to decipher yet. So the song Evidence sounds like that. And brother, I did all these moves to it. And I just, and I wrote it, I was like, yo, <laughs> I know you're not asking for this, but, <laughs> but I can't help but think about Monk and this basketball court, you know? Well, well Monk was a huge influence on me. Mm. And, and, and it's a funny story because how he became a huge influence on me was, um, I, you know, I grew up in Amsterdam in the Netherlands and, and then on, the, on Sunday, there was always very good TV and I switched on the TV and uh, I, I see them, a man by himself at the piano. Mm. And it's a, it's a stand-up piano, you know, mm. and um, he's playing by himself. And I'm, and I'm listening and I'm thinking, whoa, what? Bing, bing. He's like, yeah. like where, where, what's happening here? Like, this is a very interesting way of piano playing. And I was familiar with, with music, you know, like classical music, right. uh, jazz. And, but, and I was like, man, this is amazing, you know? And he's, he was wearing, you know, the little cap that he always had on. Yeah. And, um, and then when it ended, it said his name on the screen, Thelonious Monk. Yeah. And then I thought that he was Greek <laughs> because his, his name was Thelonious, which sounded like a Greek name. Right, all those O's and U's. And, and, and then, yeah. And then I thought, wow, he's Greek like like me. <laughs> I was made I was made to feel Greek in Holland by people. You know, kids would always like say if something went wrong, then they would refer to me by my nationality. Wow. Like I would become, oh, you fucking Greek, oh, oh, or whatever, you dirty Greek, that kind wow. of thing. Uh -huh. So, but then, and I thought, wow, this is incredible. Like a Greek guy plays music like this. And of course, you know, it's a bit naive, you know, and I figured that out later. <laughs> Floaty's Monk, you know, is a 
African American guy, you know, black yeah. guy from the United States, <laughs> of course. But he is a Greek god, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's but, also, but what you pick up on is also his ability, you know, kind of what you said earlier about when you work with when you work with subjects is is monks greatest ability is he allows space for you in the music mm -hmm. he leaves enough space i mean and just in in how i mean literally he's resting and letting music go by without mm -hmm. off you know without playing anything the rest is also the composition it's not simply mm -hmm. just the action he makes but he always allows that part and i think it's what still brings people to his music look and not everybody likes that stuff either but I know when I first heard it in the same way, you know, I heard it, my mother and father were looking at television of a, of a plane wreck of, of, of a politician they knew in Houston. Uh -huh. So it was, they were watching the wreckage on television and the, but there was no audio coming from the television. The only audio was them listening to Thelonious Monk play Round Midnight as a solo piano piece. Uh -huh. And so that became the commentary. And I thought in the same way, like he was like, who is this guy? You know, yeah. My thought was like, who is this guy that deserves the honor that made the honor his to make a music that could help that could carry a heavy moment, like you know, losing someone. And uh, and I looked at the thing. I looked at the at the image on the cover and this beautiful goatee and profile and the hat. And I thought, oh, I know that. I know that's that. yeah. who. You know, like that's who who I want to be. And, and yeah, he, but he always is like, he leaves so much space in it. And that space is also intimidating too, for a lot of people who are like, yo, cause it makes you, it, you know, it, it can make one have to reflect. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I'm a, I, I you know, like for me, he can't do no wrong. You know, the, right. the other day I was playing like a, um, his big, the, he had a big band album that is really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget the title of it. Thelonious Sphere says it says Sphere S P H E R E Monk. Yeah, like, yeah, wow. yeah. And I think you know. So I mean, the truth is that Monk brought us together. I mean, we already knew each other. Uh, I think you know through Kara, basically, right. because you were um, working on the Calliope and stuff and all these things. But like, I think that that the, our collaboration with the park started really because we started really communicating a lot more. And then we did the rehearsal at your house. Mm -hmm. And for me, the most important thing was actually, because since you brought it up live, you know, you can't go back, was for you to play the soundtrack in a performance, not go in a studio and then look at it and you play and then go, okay, let's go back, you know, and then that no, is, just yeah. do, you know, and we did two takes. We did a take in rehearsal. Right. And then you, and then you did the performance, and that's the one, you know, and the perform. And what was amazing about the performance was this this small place, right. with with Min Tanaka, yeah, <laughs> who danced with Cecil there watching, yeah, and and this, yeah. and the other others, the, the woman uh, Fujiko Nakaya, she works with Fog and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, these people are here, you know. I was like, wow, and yeah. and that was for me the most important part that. Um, that there was sort of a, a celebration of the film, but also a live performance at the same time mm -hmm. and make that the soundtrack mm -hmm. un, unedited as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, that's, it was also intimidating. <laughs> Just because, you know, because, because the park is already perfection, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a community, you know. And the community is diverse. You know, they're listening to music. People are hanging out. They're playing a game. They're stopping. You know, there's all these movements in it too. I think it was what the, one of the things we started to notice was like, yes. oh, you know, like okay, so this is this movement when the young kid comes out and he's ready to do the one on one, or this is the game. You know, and um, you know, like the you know you know basketball and life or whatever is all is all rhythm and. Um, and you know, one thing I learned, probably we could talk about this probably for a while, but yeah. even when working with skateboarders, you know, like sometimes I'll play a live concert and invite skaters to skate and we'll do it around a half pipe or a bowl or something, is if I'm playing the wrong music, they fall a lot, you know? 
And so I have to be careful about what is played when people are working, you know what I mean? Um, because it does have an effect. And I noticed it and I said, oh man, you know, not that music has power like that. It could injure people, but it does. <laughs> Especially if somebody's focusing on their body, you know? So like listening to a basketball game, right? Hearing the music that they're listening to in the park, you know, like what that feels like, what hip hop sounds like in Brooklyn, you know, in the summertime is a real thing. And it's necessary too, for people to express out loud, you know, through sound and the songs that they want to hear. Um, but I, I would say the intimidating part was like, okay, so now we're gonna just play along with that, you know? So now yeah. I'm gonna look more at, look, look at the footwork or I'm gonna look at, you know, I'm gonna look at the, the, the woman walking by with, the, with the, her stroller, her baby stroller, you know, mm -hmm. with the people who stop, you know, it just, it allowed me to kind of like, you know, realize much of what I think also attracts people to New York City is the people. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a celebration. It's a celebration yeah. of people. I mean, as much as, is a celebration of basketball yeah. and, I, and 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 um and i first intended it as a silent movie mm. and and then when you did that thing at the kennedy center then i thought oh this is actually perfect and then all of this happened you did the performance and the show was three weeks later and i um got the sound mix back yeah. and karen and i were in Hakuba in the Japanese Alps, right. you know, and I was snowboarding in the day. And then at night, at night I would have uh, the movie with the, with the music. Like mm. Finally, you know, I had lined it up mm -hmm. and, we, and we just sit there and, and just look at it and, and get used to it. You know, I was, right. and I started feeling like, yeah, this is, it's, it's exact. It's, how can I say it's exactly what I wanted? Because, <laughs> because that's not really what yeah. I go for, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. I, because I, all those people, uh, I wasn't directing anybody right. what to do. Right. You know? right. But it's still all that I wanted from it. You know, yeah. I got what I wanted from. I knew that I didn't have to go there twenty days in a row to get the footage. I knew mm -hmm. any afternoon if the weather is decent, mm -hmm. set up the camera. Mm -hmm. things are going to happen mm -hmm. and people are going back and forth because mm -hmm. it's like if that path runs from from the housing to the train mm -hmm. which is not flatbush mm -hmm. and for people just walk back and forth to the park and they right. stop they yeah. meet each other yeah at these girls that like stop they meet each other and right. and, and they get on the court little, little kids get onto the court one guy is walking with a suitcase and the ball flies off the court, he catches it and passes it back in one fluid motion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that reminds me. I'm doing all this research right now on Louis Armstrong uh, for a museum they're building for him in Queens, New York now. And so I was looking for like, what did, you know, early 20th century New Orleans, Louisiana look like? And you know who just took tons of footage of New Orleans in 1917 was Ford Motor Companies, you know? I'm sure they did. And they, you know, but they kind of like, there were these long shots of all these boats coming in to the port, long shots of a square with, with trolleys going by and people coming in, long shots of cotton being brought off of the ship into the being weighed, long shots of bananas being hoisted up and then sorted. And I thought, my God, you know, like how important it is to document the spaces you are in, just period. Like it should be a requirement of everybody <laughs> to document where they are. Um, and that there aren't a ton of images, let alone moving images of New Orleans at the birth of one of the most powerful forms of music, you know, uh, uh, of jazz, early jazz, uh, of which Louis Armstrong helps pioneer. And so I was thinking like, oh shit, that music from that time, that music is for the people who work that hard. And mm -hmm. so it sounds like that for a reason, you know? Hip hop sounds like that for a reason in the eighties or nineties, you know, it's different now, I think. But um, it sounded that way because it was for people in the community. It was a, another documentation form. But, yeah. but when you talked about like, kind of like, like documenting the park, it just made me think about how I, I just came away from watching those old films thinking 
how extremely necessary it was for somebody to just set up cameras and let them roll on on neighborhoods that people lived in because we just need them just as record keeping let alone art whatever but we just yeah. need it as a record of nah this is how it feels <laughs> here yeah yeah i mean i mean i i truly believe like i have you know i had an exhibition at the berkeley museum and that was called within within arm's reach and that mm. basically meant that you know what like i photograph but it's kind of near to me I photograph when I travel, but I mostly I photograph, you know, when I walk down the block and, you know, everything like I did, I did this book, you know, the Conrad McRae book, and it's oh, like wow. 850 pages of a high school basketball tournament where wow. I went for six summers in a row, in a row, which was because it was behind my house. But also I have some neighbors, Gary, Gary is his name. He lives like close to me. He was born in the house that he lives in. And his family's from Tennessee, right? Mm. And Gary told me that his um, brother was going to um, celebrate his 60th birthday. He was going to come up from Tennessee, and like, they were, were going to have the birthday party at his house. And it was over a weekend. And I, you know, you know, and I walk back and forth. This is pre-COVID times too. Mm. And I start noticing there's two guys sitting on the stoop that I don't know, but and, and I'm like, hey, you guys, you guys are here for the birthday? And they go, yeah. Say, so, you mind if I take a picture of you guys? And they go, yeah, sure. So I took a picture and I came back. There was three guys. Oh, you mind if I take a picture? You know, it's always saying hello to whoever was there, right, take right. their picture. And then over two, three days, that's what I did. And then I, the, I developed the film and I looked at the pictures and I saw there was 12 different guys that I photographed. Hmm. So I put together a little zine where everybody was in it and I printed 15 copies and I dropped 12 copies off at Gary's house. <laughs> yeah. And then when I went to get my hair cut at the barber shop, they said to me, yo, Gary came in here and he brought that book he made. <laughs> he was so happy. Right. You know, yeah. and that's, and that's what I'm, and that, and like, I make that, it was just, that was it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like, I mean, you know, and you say pre-COVID times, right? There's also that part where, you know, like how in the past few months, well, shit, it's the past year now yeah. coming up. Um, that shift of like kind of modes of creativity that have changed how we work, you know, um, like even just even talk about, you know, us linking up for you to um, shoot the photograph I used for this new record I just put out. Yeah. Uh, and I just kept saying, do you need an assistant? You're like, no. <laughs> I said, my son could come up. No, <laughs> I don't need anything. So it seems like you were already kind of pre-COVID, you know, a kind of a pre-COVID artist because you just roll with the camera and whatever. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I never use assistants, but I have like one, sometimes when I'm filming and equipment is heavy or mm -hmm. on commercial jobs, I've used assistants, but um, especially with portraits, I like to be alone, mm -hmm. you know, by my, like, so I can just, yeah. That, so that it's just about me and the and the other per, and the other person. You mm -hmm. know? Have you been out in the city like a lot? You know now, like like shooting, or is it? No, no, no. I take my camera out, but then, um, and I I've, I've taken some pictures, but not a lot. I haven't. For example, when the protests were happening, you know, I went to a couple of them. Um, uh, and given my age, I was a little bit worried, but I thought, mm -hmm. well, I should be part of it at least. So I went to some of those and I took a few pictures, but I felt like this, when mm -hmm. I looked around, I said, this is being documented already. Mm -hmm. Everybody's mm -hmm. documenting this, mm -hmm. but there's no pressure on me because I, I, I feel pressure often to like, you know, I have to do this or register this, register that. Uh -huh. So I thought I'd be more like a, sort of participant than, than, than documenter. Mm -hmm. But I did, you know, I mean, I have some photographs of, you know, boarded up shops, like a boarded up Whole Foods with a woman in a wheelchair sitting in front of it. Like that's mm. the only person you see or, mm. or the way the Apple store was boarded up with very tasteful white, <laughs> white painted boards, not like plain, <laughs> not like plain um, plywood. And, and, uh, and yeah, and I, there was a little, 
little there's a little basketball court around the corner where there's some um, girls that are I don't know the, ranging from age 10 to 14 or something they practice basketball mm -hmm. so, and then uh, they were outside even though it was kind of cold weather so I went there mm -hmm. a couple of weekends and took some pictures mm -hmm. because I knew one of the girls you know one of the dads of the girls I knew he just he just told me just meet me outside because that's a, that's another thing we just met outside i think right. normally we would have probably gone to a coffee shop because it was pretty right. cold right and and uh, and he said that his girl was doing practice basketball practice so i brought a camera with me and i took a few photos yeah uh, uh, yeah 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 it's deep you know it was also the city is there's no visitors here you know so it's new yorkers um yeah. Here and it's New Yorkers mostly, you know. Uh, if you're not an essential worker, you kind of are, are off the streets by the evening because there's kind of nothing to do. Uh, so the city, to a degree, I feel like the city is used half of the day. But then there are people saving the city, you know, like the people, the, the, the delivery people, the people working in the hospitals, you know, the, the, the mail workers, you know, the FedEx, the UPS. I mean, these like, soldiers of humanity right now you know like i i keep being taken by a kind of bravery uh that it takes to keep a city as important as new york city even kind of like kind of slowing our blood you know like our, 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 our you know how fast our, our i don't know what i'm trying to say what is the word i can't you know like the speed at which your blood flows through your veins but we're just slowing it down now right so we're making sure it still courses but it's just on a much slower uh, pace, tempo, and like right. I would go around the city and I would go like drive by like the, the jazz clubs, you know, Village Vanguard, you know, and, or, or you know, uh, Smoke or Jazz Standard. It's now all these places, some of these places might not even reopen. And uh, yeah. there's a part that, you know, it's just like, it's desolate here. Yeah. And, um, and we still got a long way to go too, you know. I know. But, you know, like I have to say that the the mailman and the and the UPS man and you know those guys that the ones that I know mm. that that do my block mm -hmm. yeah I've I've always I've always appreciated those guys yeah it's amazing and 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 and, and uh, you know I always take care of them at the end of the year mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah I was thinking think think about these people who, you know like. The, you know, people who deserve uh, medals of freedom. <laughs> yeah, you know, when a, when a mailman, the mailman that that comes with the truck, he mm. comes multiple times a day. You know, mm -hmm. and I look at him, and uh, you know, he he hasn't gotten sick, I guess, because I I see him. You know, he's here all the time, mm. and I'm worried about him. You know, yeah, I don't want to see that truck without him. I mean, I'm right. serious. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm worried about myself too, but I'm worried about him too. Yeah. And yeah. and we have a we have a relationship because of that he brings stuff to me, but our relationship became even stronger because um Ty Sean who um um skates skates for Supreme, he was skater of the Thrasher skater of the year. He was there's a there's a spot here called the fish gap and he was doing the fish gap. And the mm. fish gap is like it elevates like and then it, it's like a like a loading dock mm. and then you jump down onto a like a sloped area mm -hmm. and everybody does that they go from loading dock to the sloped area but he wanted to do it the other way around come uh -huh. off the sloped area up but you need enough speed so they were using one of those scooter rent scooters <laughs> blue rental scooters to pull him up well, oh and God. i just happened to go get a coffee and i saw those guys so i was watching them and I, was, I take a few pictures and he, he, the mailman was there too, and he was checking it out. And then when I saw him the next day, we talked about that for 20 right. minutes about how right. unbelievable it was that these kids were doing that. And, yeah. you know, so I got to, kn to know him a bit. And yeah, and, yeah, uh, people still, yeah, still, yes, yeah, skaters gonna still use the city. <laughs> oh, yeah, more, more so than ever. Yeah, graffiti yeah. riders and skaters, they're, yes. over. they're like, yeah. Hell yeah, you're like gonna <laughs> uh, fly with everywhere for us. <laughs> I kind of appreciate that part. I gotta say that, you know, like watching that, you know, of what attracts me to New York, you know, like uh, yeah. the street culture, uh, 
uh, finding its other this you know this other way to to reverberate in the city that still needs it you know yeah, for sure well yeah, yeah. I think that also the the last thing that you know that we kind of hung out at was Kara's opening back in March of of okay. 2020 and um, and so was, you know you and Kara uh, at this amazing opening <laughs> I mean that show was like surreal also to just see that body of work was tremendous. And then we went to dinner afterwards and Lucy Raven and Matthew Barney. And so just on, what's today? What's today? Today is whatever today is. And then I guess, oh, on Saturday, seeing you four again come to the opening downtown. And then I, as I was looking at you, I was like, oh, I had a sense memory because we hadn't all seen each other yeah. together. And I was like, oh, like when COVID was beginning to ravage New York City, <laughs> we were the last people. We had a dinner. Uh, we yeah. sat in a in a small room all together. Yeah. yeah. All 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 starting to pray. Right. Serious. And the city was beginning quiet. You know, it was yeah. like it was starting yeah, yeah. that moment. You know, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it was good to see uh, everybody. Yeah. yeah, but that that <laughs> felt that felt good. You know, also you know like our the modified habit we have of of how to gather, you know, which to a degree, I don't think it's going to go out of style for a while. <laughs> it's going to be, it will only evolve, but it won't, it won't leave, you know. Uh, but just, but seeing you all again was, was like, oh, it was a bit of a kind of a wave of like, kind of knocked me back for a second. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. And then what was interesting, because uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, bring attention to the fact that um, uh, to, to the new album that you just put out on, uh, on mm -hmm. Bandcamp, on Bandcamp um, mm -hmm. the sound will tell you and um, how, you know, um, you know, we did a portrait session together a few days before you decided to use the picture um, mm -hmm. for the release uh, and uh, and, and you send me a, a preview and I, I listen to it, you know, right away. And uh, mm -hmm. a tremendous record, you know, a tremendous solo record. Mm -hmm. um, and um, really in a way, and we have listened to it quite a bit now, both mm -hmm. Kara and I, you know, more, more than 20 times already. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's things you need, like if you want to know something, then you know it's like you want to practice a a, a three pointer, then you're gonna to have to like you know try a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we listened to this record and we listened to it and we had it on. There's a difference, right? Mm, right. When it's right. playing, and I'm mm. and I'm doing something else, then it's mm -hmm. playing. Or I sit down and I listen. Mm -hmm. And um. And so when I came to the exhibition and I looked at the works, which um, are, you know, these drawings that are a result of you putting paper, as I understand it, on the keyboard and then you mm -hmm. play. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, 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 so looking at these works and seeing this sort of, how can I say, yeah, that there's a, there's a precision and a non-precision to them. Like, you know, you, you can see, okay, this this area got touched a lot. Yeah. But there's sort of a flow in it too. Yeah. Like a yeah. shadow like you and that you've talked about in your in, in the music. And yeah. uh, so that was that was fascinating. And then to hear you say that you did all of that outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, make the work outside. <laughs> yeah. I mean also because it was it's I, mean, I don't have a studio, um, mm. and uh, so I use my in-laws' backyard um, as a place to set this up because it's also pretty messy with the with all that dry pigment everywhere. But since this was all happening kind of in March, I started in March making these new works, uh, and I also started trying to write during that time too because I had, and I wouldn't even say it was writing; it was just kind of more like a journal. You know, you sit down and you play something, and then seven minutes later, something falls out and then you write that down and that ends up becoming the piece. Um, so they, the, the works on the wall kind of became surrogates for the concerts I never got to perform, you know, for all of last year. And the songs themselves 
became kind of the weight and the heaviness of, of what it felt like to live through 2020. Um, and all the uprisings, you know, whether it was about class, whether it was about gender, whether it was about race, whether it was about the art itself, you know, whether it was about the mismanagement of the country, which has long been going on. And uh, so I couldn't, as much light as I like to bring to things, I also was just having these works that just weren't feeling like that. And, um, and I wanted to acknowledge it too. So just say like beginning of 2021, a new exhibition, you, you know, and a new set of piano works that kind of like at least say that 2020 happened and now we're in 2021, you know? So, so to just try to start this year on a creative tear, you know, uh, to not sit back, uh, but more like try to bite into, bite into the time. So felt good to have now people to listen to the record or someone come see the exhibition because you know, we're gonna have to like kind of get our energy back again this winter to hit the spring, you know, and the rest of the year with some kind of ferociousness that I think people will enjoy because <laughs> they'll need some joy. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I'm not stopping anything. Yeah. I mean, I've been making things, you know, throughout and, 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 and putting my web, I put a website out there where people can view my movies. And what Those, that website is amazing. And these t-shirts, which I'm waiting for, look amazing. And the zines, you know, like, I think we talked on the phone about Cecil Taylor for a minute. And then, then you just like, oh, look at this. <laughs> and then here's this, you know, yeah. this thing that you just made, right? So you're in a, in a in kind of a rapid fire, uh, yeah. a rapid fire moment. Yeah. Yeah. There's, on, there's only 10 of those. Beautiful, okay. So yeah. now it's an artifact. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You have one. Hamza Walker has one. Nice. Archie Rand, my um, who introduced me to Cecil, has one. And Jay Saunders from Artist Space, mm, who, yeah. who, who, you know, he worked on those concerts. Yes, he did. Where, where, where we saw each other. That's right. That's and remember, right. and you were with who are you with? With your drummer? Yeah. Yeah, I was with Nasheed. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's you, right. with, yeah and yeah. you guys were like, well, where are we gonna sit? And we said. I said, come sit with us. Yeah, but right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Our reserve for us, <laughs> for you. <laughs> Forget about all these people that I think have reserved seats. <laughs> that was such a special night, right? And that, probably that that probably happened. I'd say a lot, you know, during this time too was more kind of like the recall of of things that happened in the past. You know, looking at images from that night, even looking at images of of when we were in Japan together, you know, uh, oh, making making the piece, um, you know, looking back on kind of the experiences that were transformative that still have like so many kernels of, of you know, of, of protein still in them in, in a kind of historic sense. Oh, oh my, yeah. And, and you know that the fact that we did the performances in Japan is already on its own you know, when this idea came up and they said, you know, the exhibition is going to be at Fergus McCaffrey in Tokyo. And I thought, okay, and it makes total sense. I'll, I'll we'll figure out how to get Jason over there and, and play in Tokyo, you know, yeah. and yeah. bump into Ron Carter at the hotel. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> like, like, yo, what's up? And That's great. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's great. there. You know, and this is a place, you know, this is a place that appreciates jazz. Yeah. This is a place where, you know, they put out Albert Eiler rec records. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're that like, was... you, know, you, you don't want to put out an Albert Eiler record, we'll put it out. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was, I mean, yeah, that, that's a, I feel like also that's like how good music is made or, or, or good communities kind of like find themselves. Uh, it's where, you know, you, you're confirmed in your decisions over and over. Whether you turn a coin, you say, oh, okay, I'm in the right place. You know what I mean? At the right time, um, with the right intention too, you know? You're confirmed by those, those whatever decisions that seem kind of like, oh, well, we'll just try to do it right around this time, you know? Um, but then when it happens, you're like, oh, no, this is like, this is a magic hour, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, yeah, that's what it is. And that's not always so easy, you know, in in the in 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 a way where things, you know, 
are plan are always planned, you know, ahead mm -hmm. of time exhibitions and everything, but mm -hmm. to have an opportunity of chance and and mm -hmm. and you know like the place where we performed and then across the street happens to be a temple, mm -hmm. and they did that little documentary, you know, for the gallery, and they asked the the the, the monk, the head monk, if we could go there and mm -hmm. talk to each other, and he welcomed us, you know. Right. And I was just like, wow, where are they? It's just like. And now, you know, now and now the film, um, the, the museum is opening and closing, but it is, you know, it's playing in Dublin. Yes. It's my, you know, it's my other homeland <laughs> where you know, all the, all the Morans are send them all my love <laughs> in, in Ireland. Because also, you know, like I keep thinking, you know, like there's one part about when people experience work, you know, that they really kind of make it public that they experience something but it's really in the people who didn't say nothing about what they experienced and they just kind of live with it. You know, I went and saw this piece, you know, I didn't know there was a piece show and I saw this piece about, a, a, I don't know, maybe it's about a basketball court, you know? Uh -huh. And also that people don't get to travel as, you know, art has to go places because to, to let people know that there's somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and, and so, I, you know, like I love Dublin so much because there's a lot of, I don't know, I guess it was one of the places that also embraced the music and the story of the people that made it in a way that maybe some other countries in Europe kind of like regard differently. Um, yeah. So I know that there's a there's an audience that 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 hungers for the music, um, just like I hunger for a good pint. <laughs> <That's for sure. laughs> in a bar full of Irish people. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. I could do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, U Lane is like a special museum, and mm. and it's unfortunate, you know, that that we ha haven't been able to go there ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we will one day. I don't know. That I don't want to really. But but I think that you know, I'm always proud that you know that it, that it's there and it's living there, mm -hmm. and, and it was open. You know, mm -hmm. it was open, open and closed, and you just got to imagine that people walked in. It's a group show, but you know, my project pretty large. They walk into there, and then they hear this piano music, which you probably hear before you see it. Yeah. And when you, and then, but then when you're there, you can be absorbed in either or both. Mm -hmm. And and then they're in Dublin, but they're looking. It's a, they're they're sitting in the park in Fort Green. Yeah, that's yeah. what you, that's what you see there. Yeah, because yeah. It, you, this film, I don't want it to be, to be shown on on online or you know on TV or none of that. You know, mm. this film needs to be at the size that I decided it needs to be mm -hmm. protected, mm -hmm. so that when you when you look at it, you're there mm -hmm. and you're you're sitting you're sitting on the lawn with me. Yeah. I just want to say, you know. Happy Martin Luther King Day, man. That's right. Happy MLK Day. <laughs> yeah. It means something. <laughs> he means something. I was just reading, actually, we read it on his birthday a few days ago. Like, you know, he wrote the opening speech for the 1960, wait, oh my God, 1963 Berlin Jazz Festival on their first year. You know, he wrote this speech. Um, talking about the power of the music and um, and the power of liberation, you know? So, you know, liber liberation through representation, you know? Exactly. Yeah. He knew music, just listen yeah. to how he spoke. Oh God, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is a day, yeah, good day to, to also meet up to talk to. Yeah, yeah, true visionary, yeah. <laughs>